de quello che ho e mo ci arrivi là sopra no lì di nuovo no 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 no
the night.
Por aquí quiero mucho. Lovely girl from Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get over here? 
Yeah, yeah, no, 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 Amor, 
I'm sitting here at the moment with a group of young people and we're just sitting beside the room where the apparitions uh, used to occur up just some months ago. You can see the window just over my head here. And inside, that, inside that window is the room where the uh, Our Lady used to appear to the children up to around Easter time. 
and to our left we have the, the large mountain with the cross on top and way back in 1933 that cross was erected as a symbol of the faith of the people here in the risen Lord 1933 being the 1900th anniversary of the death and the resurrection of Christ and since 1981 when it first appeared of course uh, many signs have been associated with it the word peace being written there on one occasion in the sky but to come back again to my group here around me I think one of the most um, delightful things for us while we were here is just meeting so many young people uh, so full of life, full of joy, full of love very happy, really enjoying themselves so I'm going to turn now to one or two of them to um, just talk a little bit with us and I think I'll turn first to uh, Pat Thorless. Pat comes from Sligo and he's in college in Galway University. Pat, you came here in Galway and if I gather correctly you didn't go home yet. <laughs> you just tell us um, why is it you've stayed so long? Well, um, I came out here first in April with, uh, with a group and um, I stayed a week and um, I was really impressed, especially by the people. So I decided that um, this would be a beautiful thing to be able to take home, so I'd like to come back and spend maybe some time here and maybe experience how the people live, how they, they manage to live the gospel message in today's society. And um, so I decided to come back for the summer and I suppose I'm here indefinite. And it's just a beautiful experience. It's very hard to put two months experience into uh, a few words, but um, I found here all I've ever searched for. Um, there's a great peace. I feel happy. Um, I don't worry so much about things I used to worry about. I don't worry so much about, well, going out at the weekends anymore. It's important, it's nice, but uh, it's not the be-all and end-all for me anymore. God is number one, and that's all that matters to me. Thank you. Maybe we've gone out to one of the ladies, <laughs> and uh, here beside Pat, we have uh, Francois from London. And uh, Francois, I think this is your fourth? No, um, this is my second time. Oh, second time here. Your sister's fourth, but she has been here for four, and this is her fourth trip to Medjugorje. Uh, Francois, what would you say has uh, impressed you most about Medjugorje? I think it's mainly the intensity of prayer. Um, I found when I was back at home in England, um, there wasn't this intensity and love of God that we should all have. I found that here they had really truly found God. Um, when I first came here, this was about last year in September, um, I came with a group and, well, obviously being a, like a tourist, I was sort of looking around and seeing everything just seemed very interesting to me. But um, it's only when I really went away did I really realise the importance of Our Lady's message in Medjugorje, the importance of prayer, of saying the rosary daily. And I found that by saying the rosary, my spiritual life increased. I didn't sort of look aimlessly, because before I was just sort of searching um, just for, I had plans, a sort of pre-planning, I was always having desires to do this, that and the other, and nothing satisfied me. But once I found God, I realised that that's all you need. I mean, God is the key. I mean, that is the meaning of life. God is the meaning of life. We must all search for God. And that's really what the message brought home to me and the intensity of prayer, the need for prayer, is so urgent. Um, our, our, really, our world is doomed if we don't pray. It, that's what I, I really Thank feel. You. Thank you. I might turn now to the gentleman here on my right. Connor is from Dublin. And Connor, you arrived here last Thursday? Thursday. Yeah. And um, could you say what, um, what you have found here for yourself? Well, I, I first really began to find something. I think I started growing here when I went up to Krizevat 
Peak, which is the mountain that was with the cross on top in 19, that was built in 1933. And I went up that, and Pat and I, I'm, I'm not saying this, believe me, to boast, but Pat and I went up without, without our shoes on. And it was a kind of a challenge that I wanted to do. And I, in the middle of it, it was horrible. I hated it, and I, I just continued on. And then at one stage we had a rest, and I just, I suddenly stopped and looked out, and the stars here are just brilliant. They're really much, much stronger than they are I've ever seen before. And you could see the odd one going on and off, twinkling, which is a sign that Our Lady does. And without ever having intended to find peace, I just found myself sitting here, and I was completely at peace. And it was the same thing when I got up to the top of the cross. I was completely at peace. I couldn't get over it. I had never intended this thing to be to to happen. I had never intended to find peace by doing it. I was sort of doing it for well, what might might be considered a kind of a old-fashioned idea, so that my sins would be forgiven and so that the sins of the world would be forgiven. While I was doing it, and it was hell, it was horrible, it was turmoil. And then when I <laughs> when when I finished it, without ever intending to have found peace, I found myself sitting there just looking out at the stars and feeling so totally, at the same time, empty and full. And I don't ever want anything else. I don't want to be terribly rich. I don't want to live a life that's... Uh, I don't want to be consistently searching for pleasure. I just like to live like that, live with that feeling inside me. And before I came here, the reason why I came, the reason I gave myself for coming was, I want to come and experience God. I haven't experienced him here in the way that I intended to. I've experienced him in a way that he picked, rather than I picked. Uh, I couldn't understand that. And before I came, I'd heard this saying a lot, St. Augustine, where he said, my soul will find no rest till it finds rest in God. And that's what everyone here is doing. They are just resting, resting in God. It's a really restful, peaceful place. And people had said that, you'll see a community transformed and all this kind of stuff, you know. And now that I'm feeling it, just beginning to feel it, because I mean, I've only been here since Thursday, and it's what, Sunday now. I'm only just beginning to feel it, and it's marvellous. And I, I just hope that I can... It'll mean warring with myself at home and warring with the influences at home, but I want to bring that feeling home. And when people ask me where I've been, I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them what's happening here and I'm going to hope I will not force them to be converted or anything but I hope that they'll see the importance of prayer the importance of the rosary how it can guard you and protect you like Mary talks about holding us under her mantle mm -hmm. lovely woolly warm gentle mantle she has and she keeps us she keeps us inside it and I hope that people will see that prayer is the only thing that can bring you to God and that you will find absolutely no rest, no fulfillment with anything other than God. And that's what Medjugorje can do for you. <laughs> I'm getting the names all mixed up. Uh, Louise, maybe I would tell them to you now. Um, just taking up what Connor has just been saying about <coughs> the importance of prayer and the, the other people have spoken as well. Um, how would you, would, you, would you say that your way of praying and your way of looking at religion and God and life has changed uh, since you came here. You told me before the program that it has helped you. Um, well, before I used to pray, I used to say the rosary. When I heard about Medjugorje, I believed straight away. I think that was a gift from God, just having that immediate faith without having been here. and. Uh, I began saying the rosary, but it was always a chore, and it was just off rote. And actually, I didn't really know how to say the rosary. It's another gift to know how to say the rosary. And I would try and concentrate on each word, rather than think about the mysteries and picture in my mind. But now, since I've been here, I've learnt to do that. And the rosary has meant far more to me. I think it's so 
it's so important. It's really brought to to life how important it is. And um, I hope I can keep it up. And you can never say enough rosaries in this place. <laughs> There's always more you can say. And you have all day to say rosaries. You have all day to, to go to Mass. You know. But there is so much peace here. Peace is fantastic. I have to, all I have to do is to think about God and I receive the peace I'm searching for. And when I find there's so many distractions, I mean, it's so easily to be distracted, but just thinking about God just brings you back to that peace. And now we're staying with a family that pray the rosary. And my sisters and I now pray with them in the morning and in the evening. And the mother is so fervent in her prayer. And she says the rosary with so much joy. Her face just shines with love. You know, and it makes me feel quite guilty. <laughs> and she encourages everybody. She encourages the whole, the whole family. And her... Um, strength brings the whole family together. It's so much of a, a very close unit. And it's yeah. It's lovely to pray with them. And the family itself is a community. And there's so many families like that, like her family. And there's so many little communities within the whole community of Medjugorje. Peace comes from all directions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Louise. Um I think I'll turn now to Brigitte here on my left. And Brigitte is the girl who <laughs> is here for the fourth time. Yeah. So Brigitte, you seem to be coming quite hooked <laughs> <laughs> on Medjugorje. Um, if I could just kind of take up again what uh, Louise has been saying and take it a step further. Uh, if you could tell us sort of how you the way you picture God, uh, if it has developed or changed or altered through your contact with the people here and the place here and the experience of life here as your image of God your picture has been altered or changed or developed much in the last year or two well as father was saying I've been here now for the fourth time and my picture of God continually changes and each time he gets better <laughs> better all the time He's got so much to offer everybody. And if only people could realize what God could offer. I mean, coming to Medjugorje, it's like the resurrection. It really is. It's, you can't put it into words what, what's here. It's very difficult. That's all I can really say. Yeah. Uh, could you say, um, Brigitte, how what your picture of God might have been with, say, two years ago or whatever? Well... God three years ago was up somewhere in the clouds and um, you know he came down occasionally to the saints but never to me you know <laughs> and um, now he's he's there within me and I never realized that God is within me and he's within every single one of us and that's absolutely right whether we believe or not yeah recognizing and it's recognizing God in one another you know and then then you get the spirit of community by recognizing God in one another. Mm. But it's just a revelation, it really is. Mm. Praise the Lord! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brigitte. And um, would any of you like to um, say anything about with Sadie, how the experience of uh, the Eucharist of Mass here in the church in the evenings has affected maybe the way you um, uh, you, you're present of understanding now of the Mass at the moment. Pat, would you like to come in maybe? Yeah. 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 I don't know about the Eucharist, you know. Mass was never explained to me, I suppose, before, until God explained it to me. And at first, it was um, that I realized that Mary is my mother. And that was a fantastic thing for me to experience. Not that I have a mother already, but just realize that I have another mother that's always with me. I spend a lot of time on my own here and I miss my family a lot, but I realize that I have my mother. And through her, she gave me her son. And um, it was just slowly, and it always happens that way, slowly. 
nice and easy that I realise that Jesus is in the Mass. And it's just the people, the way they celebrate the Mass too. I mean, you can't help it. They really love the Mass. And they really love Jesus. And it's so obvious. And you can... You really just have to come here and see it. <laughs> That's all I can say, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's... Um, so it's all very fine to say we should come here, but mm. presumably, I, c I take what you're saying, Patty, of course, and uh, that would be my, exp my experience as well, that uh, you can't relate an experience, I suppose. But what about um, with the people who, who don't come here? And uh, what would you say to young people at the moment who are sort of, you know, a bit confused, mm. uh, maybe just perhaps having just got results of maybe leaving such examinations a week ago, um, facing the prospect maybe of unemployment, you know, those who have maybe got bad results in college, those who are unemployed at the moment, um, and who have, will never have the opportunity, perhaps, of being able to come out here. Um, um, what would you say to them, to those who are at the moment maybe searching for something more? How do you go about uh, searching for this relationship, this contact with God that so obviously you have found? There is no more depressing looking birth, no more of a failure, nothing that looks more like a failure than the birth of Jesus and the death of Jesus. He was born, if you think about it, now I don't mean this as a slur on Mary in the slightest way, but if you think about it, he was the son of an unmarried mother, he was born in some little Mickey Mouse <laughs> barn with the cows and donkeys, with the smell of dung, with straw, with strips of, of cloth uh, to lie on. Nothing could possibly be more depressing, could possibly look more like failure. No birth could possibly have looked more like failure than, than his did. No death could possibly have looked more like a failure. Uh, he said he was the son of God, he had saved loads of other people, and then there he is, he's nailed to a cross, violently, his mother's there in front of him, to see awful suffering, hideous pain, everybody rejecting him, all his friends keep away from him. There is nothing that could possibly look more like a failure. Jesus' life on the surface looks like one of the greatest failures that ever was. All the more reason, if your life looks like a failure, all the more reason to go to Mass. Mm. Because when you're down, you need Jesus an awful lot more. The Mass is a fueling point. If you're living at fifth gear in your life, <laughs> you need petrol. <laughs> Put it this way, prayer is the fuel of life. You simply will not keep going. The faster you go, the more you want to do, the more you need to pray. Mary said that to the young people's prayer group here. Uh, she said, when you're finding things difficult and you can't do everything, pray more. Now they are praying three hours a day as it is. She said, when you can't do anything, pray more. When you're failing, when you've had bad leaving results, maybe that's God's will. Maybe that's his wanting you to come to him and question, say, God, why the hell have you done this to me? I mean, I mean, why? Maybe he has given you these bad results, uh, uh, whatever, maybe he's given you any suffering. Maybe he's given it because he wants to wake you up. And he wants to make you say, why has this happened to me? Why have I been given this? Yes, yes. What we found, the sisters, we, we tend to sing together and it's so uplifting. It's singing in prayer, singing is something God-given and we should really use it to the fullest. Each one of us, I mean, then you really experience joy in your heart. There's nothing like singing. And praising the Lord is, that's the best way to do it. Now, when you go back from here, back to London, to Dublin, <laughs> to Galway University, <laughs> Connors and Dublin University, you said yes. Um, What do you intend to do with your life? Some people would say that, uh, you know, because if you pray like this, and does this mean that you're going to automatically end up uh, with a Roman collar or a, <laughs> or a veil? <laughs> what do you intend to do with your life? Well, I intend to ask God about it. 
I know that whatever happens to me, he said as he was leaving in the ascension, which is one of the things you meditate on the rosary, he said, I am with you always, even till the end of life, even till the end of the ages. God is always with us. Mary said, believe as if you see. See him here, standing, not seen to the camera, but standing here, thinking about it. God is always with me. And even though, like I said, Jesus' life looked on the surface like a failure, even though my life might be a failure, fine, if that's God's will. It's serving him and loving him that matters and nothing else. And once you have peace in your heart, once you have peace of heart, you may have no money, you may have no job. If you've no job, all the more time to pray to God, to praise Him, to think about Him, to find Him. God will look after you. He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. He said, Look at the birds, look at the trees, the flowers. I look after them. How much more will I look after you? He loves us. He wants to look after us. Seek first the kingdom of God, and God will give you what you need. You don't need much, that's all. <laughs> Thanks, Carlo. Um, how has it affected your work, Brigitte? My work? Yes. Well, I'm able to bring Jesus more into... I'm a nurse, by the way. <laughs> um, more into other people's lives. By not um, so much by what I say, but more by my actions. and. It may be just the simplest of actions, it may be just a smile, it may be just a wave, or it, but that's just all somebody needs. They don't need any more than that. And what you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. And that's all I've got to say for that. Thank you. Um, so, to all of you, thank you very, very much for joining us. And it's really been, it's really been a joy and a pleasure talking to you. And Again, thank you and enjoy the rest of your stay here in Medjugorje. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> and perhaps we'll be all back here together again next year, sometime maybe. Yeah. Thank you.
jeftine izvješće našeg grijeka i otvorimo se Bogu jer i s tom pitanju veliko nam se priprije to vam je pripremno da odite i sjedite i plaćite da se otačimo svijek i sjedinjanje svoje ne možemo sjediti da ovo zavisno Thank <laughs> you. 
dao ga mislim da se bi još vjerovanje se da može naša. Zatim blagoslov za sve nabožne predmete, molitva nad bolestima i sreći dio ružarja, slavno od tajstva. Ne znam za istar koji imate još primjeraka, zadnji broja Svete Baštine i na njovi broj glasa koncila. U drugom uredu možete nabaviti i drugog duhovnog tiska, knjiga, koji vas mogu duhovno osježiti. Uzmite vremena uvijek i za to. Oni koji su ovdje prvi put, su da naišli s odmora i čuli za ovo sve strašno i sada svaku večer nam prenosi da ima susrete s gospom Viska Marija Jakov Ivan. Od sedmo svibnja ove godine mjesec Ivanka nema više ukazanja u svakodnevni. Kaže da joj je obećano za godišnji ukazanja 25. lipnja 76. Uče naša. Ako niste još probali, kreknite oprobajte to vam je 5 minuta, ako li je pomoli. Ako ste brzo možete da može i 3 minuta. Ne poslušajte ako niste još. Tako se počinje. Zatim, ružarije, to je sva tri dijela, krunice, radosna, želosna i slavna tajna. Ko ne zna kako se to moli, koji su po redu, kod me je molitvenik, nije sramota, pa pogleda koja se to po redu tajna i moli, posljedno obitelj. Zatim, čitanje svetoga pisma, tjedan, dva puta, post, Ha, ha, ha. 